Hi all, so in this video we can see about some important physiological basis questions that can come from the endocrine thyroid. Okay, so we'll see each one by one. First, why is there heat intolerance in hyperthyroidism? See, we know that basically in hyperthyroidism we've got increased thyroid hormone levels. And thyroid hormone, we know that it increases the cell metabolism. So naturally in hyperthyroidism there would be increased cellular metabolism which means there will be an increased basal metabolic rate. Not only that it increases the number, size and activity of mitochondria. So naturally there would be increased ATP production and heat generation that means there would be increased thermogenesis. And we know that the thyroid hormone also increases the sodium potassium ATP's activity. So there will be increased heat production that is calorigenic action and thereby already we've got an increased temperature and thus the high patients with hyperthyroidism will not be able to tolerate heat anymore so that is why we have heat intolerance in case of hyperthyroidism what about cold intolerance in hypothyroidism actually the mechanism is just the opposite in hypothyroidism we have decreased thyroid hormone levels which means there is decreased cellular metabolism decreased number size and activity of mitochondria so naturally decreased atp production and not only that there would be decreased activity of sodium potassium atps pump which would lead to decreased heat production and thereby reduced calorigenic action so there will be cold intolerance so basically this is due to the effect of thyroid on the basal metabolism next why is there diabetes mellitus in hyperthyroidism why are the patients more prone for diabetes mellitus in hyperthyroidism see that is because you know the effect of thyroid hormone on carbohydrate metabolism due to that in, in whenever there is increased thyroid hormone levels there would be increased carbohydrate metabolism which means it would increase the carbohydrates from from the gi tract it would increase gluconeogenesis increase the blood glucose level and thus precipitate diabetes mellitus which is called metathyroid diabetes so that is the reason why the patients are prone for diabetes mellitus in hyperthyroidism. What about decreased cholesterol in hyperthyroidism? Well that is because whenever there is increased thyroid hormone levels which means there will be increased LDL receptor expression in liver. See normally it is a thyroid hormone that stimulates LDL receptor expression in the liver. So when there is increased thyroid hormone increase LDL receptors which means there will be increased hepatic uptake of cholesterol not only that increased cholesterol will be excreted in the form of bile acids and thus there would be a decrease in the plasma cholesterol levels now a decrease in plasma more than decrease in plasma cholesterol level what we are worried about is why there is an increased cholesterol in hypothyroidism well it is the just the opposite mechanism in this case there would be decreased LDL receptor expression decreased hepatic uptake of cholesterol decreased excretion and thereby it causes increase in plasma cholesterol which means there would be at an increased risk of atherosclerosis so now this is basically because of the effect of thyroid hormone on fat metabolism now another question is what is the physiological basis for thyrotoxic myopathy now that is because of the effect of thyroid on protein metabolism. So you know when the protein, the, when the amount of thyroid is in excess, it can cause increased protein catabolism. And this in turn can lead to thyrotoxic myopathy, because that, which is basically muscle weakness. And another important physiological basis is why is there yellowish discoloration of skin in hypothyroidism? Now that is because of the accumulation of a pigment called beta carotene. Now why is that accumulated? Well that is because see in hyperthyroidism there is decreased thyroid hormone levels which means there is decreased activity of hepatic enzymes which is responsible for conversion of beta carotene to vitamin A. So there would be increased accumulation of beta carotene in the blood which would lead to deposition of beta carotene in skin and thereby cause yellowish discoloration which is called carotenemia. Now another important question is why is there edema in hypothyroidism? Now there is edema in hypothyroidism because it is normally the thyroid hormone which removes the amine sugars that is the mucopolysaccharides. So whenever there is hypothyroidism there would be decreased removal of these uh, mucopolysaccharides. So what will happen? There will be accumulation of mucopolysaccharides like chondroitin sulfate and hyaluronic acid in the subcutaneous tissue which would lead to 
which will combine with water and they form a complex and thereby they cause increased water retention in the subcutaneous area. That is why in hypothyroidism you can have mixed edema that is thickened skin with non-pitting edema can occur because of this increased water retention. Next is why is there bounding pulse in hyperthyroidism? Now that is because whenever the thyroid hormone is more, it increases the sensitivity to the beta adrenergic receptors which will cause increased heart rate, increased cardiac output and along with that we also have vasodilation which means the systolic BP increases but the diastolic BP decreases which means there will be an increased blood pulse pressure and that will cause a high volume pulse. So that is why we have a bounding pulse in hyperthyroidism. Now why is there fine tremor in hyperthyroidism? Now that is because of the effect of thyroid hormone on the synapses or on the central nervous system. So when there are increased thyroxine levels, there is increased neuronal synapse reactivity which means there is increased excitability of neurons in the spinal cord. So this, is, this would cause an increased muscle tone control and thereby cause fine muscle tremor of around 10 to 15 hertz. So basically it is due to an increased excitability of neurons. So all the muscles are receiving more input and thus causing this fine muscle tremor. So this is because of the activity of thyroid hormone on central nervous system. Next, why is there sleeplessness in hyperthyroidism? That again is due to the increased excitability of neural synapses which will lead to increased CNS activity and thereby there would be difficulty in sleeping because of this increased excitability. But what happens in hypothyroidism? There will be somnolence. You will have a long duration of sleep. Now that is because when there is decreased thyroxine levels, there will be decreased CNS activity. So there will be decreased excitability and even the muscle function would be decreased. So thus the, the patient will complain of sleeping for a long duration like 12 to 14 hours a day. Okay. So next again related to this itself, why does it cause mental retardation? So here again that is because of the effect of thyroid hormone on central nervous system. See it is thyroid hormone is required for the normal CNS activity and it is also responsible for the normal growth and development of the cerebral cortex, cerebellar cortex and the basal ganglia. So whenever there is decreased thyroxine levels, there would be slower mentation and not only that, it also has a role in the cochlear function and can lead to deaf mutism. So the main reason for mental retardation is obviously because of impaired development of the cerebral cortex, cerebellar cortex and basal ganglia due to the decreased thyroid hormone levels. So next is why is there hyporeflexia in hypothyroidism? All the reflexes would be diminished in case of hypothyroidism. Why? Well, that is because whenever you have decreased thyroxine levels, you have impaired nerve conduction because thyroxine is needed for proper myelination of the neurons and the, uh, it also stimulates the neurotransmitter release, increase the number of receptors. So all this will not be there. So there will be slower transmission of the reflex signals. Not only that, what about the muscle? For the muscle also, there would be impaired muscle contraction and relaxation because there would be accumulation of fluid inside the muscles which would cause muscle stiffness. So there will be slower contraction and relaxation of the muscles. So on the whole, there would be reduced muscle spindle activation, weakened reflex activation, prolonged reflex reaction time and thereby it lead to reduced amplitude of reflex which leads to hyporeflexia. So that is why we have very sluggish reflexes in case of hypothyroidism. Now why do we have restlessness in hyperthyroidism? Again it is due to the effect of thyroid hormone on the central nervous system. Here in this case there would be increased thyroxine levels which would lead to increased CNS stimulation, increased metabolic activity in the CNS, increased neural excitability and rapid mentation which would cause increased irritability and restlessness. So that is why we have restlessness or anxiety in hyperthyroidism. So again why is there diarrhea in hyperthyroidism? Now that is because thyroid, the thyroxine hormone usually increases the motility. So whenever there is hyperthyroidism there would be increased basal metabolic rate, increased motility, increased secretion and thereby cause diarrhea. But uh, there is also an increased appetite. Why is that so? Well that is because there would be increased 
glucose absorption in case of hyperthyroidism which would lead to increased appetite and food intake okay so though there is increased appetite and food intake the patient will have diarrhea also the opposite occurs in hypothyroidism here in this case the motility is decreased there is decreased secretion decreased appetite on the whole it causes constipation so we see that all these physiological basis questions are concentrated on the effect of thyroid hormone for each of the systems so if we know the basic effect of thyroid hormone we will be able to explain the different physiological questions so i hope this was useful for you thank you